Here are 10 reasons why the crypto markets are absolutely primed to freaking explode in 2024. Why these markets are looking mega, mega bullish right now. Look, it's time to brush off, okay? That bear market PTSD and see what's in front of you. Open your eyes. I can't see. Then open your eyes. It's wild. This market when we cover the news stories we're about to cover, the things that are happening we're about to cover, I hope that you can see we are in a once in a generation, a once in a market event right now. The stars are aligning for a bull run that's going to be so stupid. It's going to hurt my brain. I'm going to be so tight. It's, it's going to be nuts, guys. Think about where we are in the market already, and people are already making life-changing gains off of dog coins, man. Haven't even got the Bitcoin ETF or any of that kind of stuff yet. The stories I'm about to share with you for 2024, massive. Big things are afoot. Strap in. Let's get it. Or, you know, by the way, we also could all be wrong and everything's going to go to zero. Crypto's risky. You never know, guys. So invest accordingly. Don't ape your life savings and okay. Or your kids' college funds or your kids', you know, food money for the week, right? Never invest more. And you can afford to lose. Obviously, let's get into it. First reason, stock markets. The markets generally are quite risk on right now that could always change in a moment but we have seen stock markets smashing new highs nasdaq new high the dow at a new high germany markets new high french markets new high indian stock markets new high all getting smashed all oh, smash ah oh, markets it's nuts people are making money in the stock markets right now and that bodes well for a Bitcoin ETF approval because people have money splashing around. The wealth effect is splashing around. Everyone's having a good time on their tech stocks and all that stuff. Get ready. because We are in a risk-on environment right now until otherwise proven. What's crazy too, by the way, stock markets have been doing their thing, right? Most crypto coins are like still... 60, 70, 80%, 90% in some cases down, like decent stuff, you know, not talking like total garbage coins, but decent stuff. Perspective. Perspective as we see all these other markets starting to hit new all-time highs. Assets like Apple hitting a new all-time high. It's been a wild ride, man. Second, the big one, the Bitcoin ETF is coming Q1, whether that's January or whether that's March. If it's denied in January, I still have high hopes for March. And that's a dip to buy because the market will tank hard if we get a January denial. Be ready for that. It's a still a possibility. Everybody thinks, okay, January 5th to 10th, that's when we're getting our approval happen. Don't count your chickens before the fat lady sings, okay, guys? When this happens, it's a big deal. Once in a market liquidity event, I know I keep repeating that, but it's worth repeating because it's so important. I need everybody to understand this. What's about to happen has never happened before, will never happen again. This is the event that brings tens of billions, potentially hundreds of billions of dollars of fresh money into the market, pension funds, retirement funds, institutional funds, everything is coming, okay? Let's just be very clear about that. Plus, we have dozens of banks rolling out buying and custody services for their customers beyond the Bitcoin ETF. This is also happening where we've seen major banks all around the world roll out these services like, oh yeah, now you can actually buy Bitcoin at the bank, by the way. What? That's insanity. That's crazy, man. It's not always just for the high net worth side. It's also for retail in some situations. So big stuff, huge news. The ramps are opening up, the doors are opening up, and on the other side of those doors, on the other side of the floodgates, is a tsunami of cash a mile high that's going to take out everything. In a good way, not in a devastating, horrific way. It's going to be crazy. No one's probably bullish enough. Again, the impact, not on day one, but over time of what's about to happen is incredible. Number three, January is probably going to see Coinbase hopefully smack down the SEC in court. That's when the hearing for Coinbase versus the SEC comes out. I think Coinbase is going to win. I don't think the SEC has a leg to stand on. And if Coinbase, when Coinbase, I should say, wins, which I think they're going to, then the SEC has got nothing left to stand on. They've lost everything they've tried to do. All their enforcement actions have basically been a big pile of crap. All their lawsuits have been a big pile of crap, and they're just wasting everybody's time and money. 
Thankfully, U.S. judges have been agreeing with sanity, not with the corrupt SEC. That event, Coinbase winning their court case, has huge implications for the entirety of the cryptocurrency industry in the same way that Ripple did. This will be the nail in the coffin for the SEC. It'll be over. We already have kind of a soft pivot, if you will, here for the Fed, where they basically said, well, probably not going to do any more rate hikes, and we're probably going to start cutting. Now, cutting hasn't happened yet. We got to wait for the cuts to happen. That'll be the official moment when it all the craziness starts, right? But the cuts are probably coming. Right now, they're saying three cuts in 2024, but if economic conditions get worse, we could expect more cuts. Generally, that pushes us back towards a stronger risk on environment. Now, I know there's a big correlation between rate cuts happening and economic Armageddon, but that's when rates are cut during a recession. Although a recession can still come in the USA. So, you know, let's, again, you never really know in markets. We all just predict and forecast and hope for the best. We could still have some wild cards in 2024. So just, again, invest responsibly, guys. Number five, the Bitcoin having Big event. Big event, although I feel like an event that's becoming less important over time, although we're going to we're gonna talk the heck out of the Bitcoin having. It's going to be a good time. We're going to have a party. It'll be great. I'm excited about it. That being said, retail investors are already buying as much Bitcoin as the Bitcoin miners are producing every month, and that's before the big banks come in. That's before Fidelity and BlackRock and all those goons come in. Then in April, the block reward gets cut in half again. Bitcoin's about to come real scarce. And you understand, too, that we are at on-exchange balances that are at a multi-year low. We haven't seen this low of a balance on exchanges since 2017. And it just keeps dropping all the time, every day, as more and more buyers wake up and start coming into the market. Mid-year, we're also going to get the markets in crypto assets or the MICA law coming into effect in the EU. Now, not a fan of MICA. MICA does some pretty crap things for crypto investors in the EU, which will eventually be rolled out globally to everybody everywhere, including KYC of wallets and all that kind of stuff. But for as crap as it is, it's at least regulatory clarity. At least then we can work within the confines of the crap regulations in order to uh, be able to ape into all of our fun dog coins and stuff online, right? Let us make our money. Come on, regulators. Let's have fun. Seven, this is also a big regulatory thing, the FASB standards. This is basically an accounting standard for Bitcoin comes into effect. This is something Michael Saylor is pushing for for quite a while. Essentially, this allows for fair accounting for holding Bitcoin on your treasury balance for companies. So that allows other companies beyond MicroStrategy to be able to effectively add Bitcoin to their company treasury. We haven't seen any big announcements yet that people are intending to do that, but those rules will come into effect in 2024. And when they do, I would expect we're probably going to see some companies hopping on board because it's a good value proposition for them. Number eight, this is a big one. We're going to get multiple and insanely good and insanely popular games that get released. Crypto games, Web3 games. We have beautiful games out there. Illuvium's a beautiful game. Off the Grid is a beautiful game. Lots of beautiful games coming out. Lots of new ones that no one's even talking about yet. They're going to be freaking massive, man. Seriously, the money going into the gaming space, in particular in crypto, like it's going to make fortunes for people. Get early, find your edge, get involved. Like It'll be nuts. Anyway, besides the point, that's going to bring a lot of normies in. A lot of people who otherwise have nothing to do with crypto, millions of people will come in to play these games. And then suddenly, when they're playing the game, they realize, oh, actually, I'm getting these in-game rewards on these in-game NFTs. And oh, crap, they're actually worth real money. Okay, let me sell all these and go ape into some dog coins now. That's how it works. We also have major upgrades coming to networks like Ethereum. They have the EIP 4844 upgrade, which is going to decrease layer two fees for Arbitrum and Optimism, StarkNet and Linea and ZK Sync and all this kind of stuff by 10 to 100x, meaning that Ethereum layer two becomes cost competitive with networks like Polygon and Solana, which is good. Competition's a good thing. Let the best chain win. But Solana, not to be outdone, also has stuff like Fire Dancer coming next year, which has an estimated 
1.2 million transactions per second, basically meaning that Solana makes everything else look like, I don't know, Windows 95 or something like this, or running on dial-up internet. Some of you guys may be too young to remember this. I'm old enough to remember this. Not that old, but old enough to remember back in the 90s dial up internet where you had to take your phone cord and plug it into the computer and you know it just would make all these sounds brah, 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 brah. you can't use the phone at the same time you're on the internet you pick up the phone it's like brah, in your ear that's where some blockchains are right now whereas uh solana fire dancer is going to be the equivalent of like fiber internet very different very different big stuff's coming those catalysts alone are enough to push the entire crypto narrative forward. And the final one here, and this is actually January 2025, but I'm putting it in for 2024 because people are going to start hyping it up in Q4 of 2024. And that is the central banks in January 2025 will now be allowed to hold 2% of their assets in crypto. So central banks, the ones that work with the Bank of International Settlements, the central bank of central banks, the whole thing's disgusting, by the way. The whole central bank thing, it's just makes my skin crawl but besides the point they're now going to be able to start holding two percent of their assets in crypto that probably means bitcoin maybe some ethereum maybe some other stuff maybe they need some chain link in there you know to do their uh cross platform swaps you know could happen man two percent's a lot for central banks so they have a lot of money a lot of money these catalysts and more there's more stuff apparently you know, there's a big election next year in America, and everybody, everybody gets to choose between Pepsi and Coke again. Stuff like this. That also has an impact on markets, obviously. But these are the big ones, I think, for crypto. These are the ones that are going to be the narratives and that are going to move the needle when it comes to the price of our magic internet money. I'll see you next time.